All right, so uh, a lot of people are requesting uh, just a basic tutorial on how to use Photoshop in general for painting or whatever. And, and I, for some reason, I just assume everyone knows these basics, but I'll just kind of run through everything you need to know on a very basic level on how to use Photoshop for painting. Now, I use uh, Photoshop CS6. I will probably be upgrading to Photoshop CC, which is Creative Cloud. Uh, and it's it's one where you pay monthly, so I'll uh, probably be doing that. But uh, let's say we have our Photoshop, right? So this is my setup. I have my navigator window up on the top right. Colors, um, swatches, I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And layers right beneath it. Now, that's pretty much all you need, right? Uh, these three main uh, windows. And uh, sometimes I'll use the history, um, actions, Actually, I haven't used actions in probably a year. Uh, brushes, I'll pull that out if I want to edit a brush and uh, change the size. Uh, I mean, uh, like the texture or the scattering or shape dynamics, right? Uh, text, that comes out from there. Uh, paragraph, which will change the formatting of the text. Paths, I do use paths uh, here and there for like more specific curves and selections, um, and that's by using the pen tool. But we don't really need that right now. Layer comps, it's a bit complicated. Well, <laughs> funny uh, but um, it, that's when you're using like a lot of layers and you really want to organize them differently channels and uh, yeah, just channels that that's there too I don't really use that as much but so let you know we have um, uh, if I hit command N or control N I'm, I'm working on a PC so it's control N uh, you can make a new file right so uh, these are the sizes I use 16 by 9 that's a very common one uh, I remember making one for MTG, and that's about, and that's Magic the Gathering, uh, 16.5 inches by 12 inches at 300 DPI, uh, 13 by 19. Some of my prints when I was work uh, at Art Center would I printed out at 13 by 19, uh, and the rest I actually don't even use that much at all. Uh, but it's I, I just I'll just make a new file, 16 by 19 at 300 DPI uh, or pixels per inch. I hit OK, and there we go. We have our new uh, file. That's my default. I just that I made. And by the way, to make a new preset, you can go to um, uh, these parameters, whatever inches. You can put like 67 inches by 45, whatever, and hit Save Preset, and it'll save those for you. Uh, and then, okay, so then you have a new file. What I did, what I did, what I did there just now was I hit F. What that does is it makes everything full screen. I can hold Space Bar, and this little hand comes up. And I can move it around, right? Now uh, I have a flick panning on. It's under the preferences. You don't really need that. But uh, if I hit F again, it'll get rid of all the tabs and stuff on the sides. Hit it again, and it comes back to this. Now, uh, I now when it's in this mode, I can't really move it around uh, unless I'm cropped like this. And now I can let's say let's say I have something here. Now I can move the whole canvas around within that thing by holding space bar. Or I can click the hand tool, which I never use. I just hold spacebar. Uh, my default uh, tool that I have selected is the brush. Uh, you could hit B for brush, and that'll kind of select that up here. Uh, what else is there? So okay, so let's talk about brushes real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, clear my brushes. Let me save them out first. All right. Uh, I'm going to go. Preset Manager. I'm going to select all of them and get rid of them. So I'm starting from scratch. Uh, and uh, of course, the my brushes are in the description of all my videos. Just scroll down over here. Let's see. And uh, yeah, so you click this, and I and it's free. All you got to do is put zero in the in the thing. So you click the brushes. Uh, a lot of people are like, it's not free. Yeah, it is. You just put zero, um, as you can see up here, and you you type in I want this, and then. Uh, It'll ask you for email. It'll send a link to your email, and you download it and open it. Uh, once you have the file, you just uh, find it, and you can either go back to Photoshop and right-click. And um, if you have your brush selected and you right-click, this will pop up, and you go load brushes, and you find that file, and you click it, and they'll show up. And that's that's really all you got to do. Sorry, they don't transfer over to any other program. Um, I don't use anything like Maga Studio or Corel Painter. I might try them out later, but right now this is, I've been using Photoshop for what, 16 years now, maybe 17, and um, even having said that, I don't know everything about Photoshop, I just know the basics, so uh, at least enough to, to be able to uh, make paintings. So uh, how do I use layers, and that's a big question that I keep getting, and basically you go, uh, you look at the layers over here, and the basic, it's a very simple concept, and if you click this little uh, 
um, button there. It'll make a new layer. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Z. By the Control Z is undo. That is very standard. Uh, I have the the preset uh, for new layer set to Control Shift A, on, which is kind of silly. I should probably make it one button like F1, F1, F2, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, so I'll press that. This will come up and hit OK. Now, if I want to <clears throat> do that same shortcut again without having to click over here, Control Shift A, that'll come up again. But if I want a new layer and I don't want this stupid thing, I'll add in Alt. So Control Shift Alt A. Now it makes a new layer as many as I want without that dialog box coming up, right? And so uh, how do you use layers? So let's say we have something on. This is layer one, right? Uh, if I hold Control, uh, this this uh, thing comes up, and I can click anywhere here, and it'll move it around. I'm gonna make a new layer by Control Shift A or whatever. It, the default, by the way, is Control Shift N. Um, I just have it set to A because my hand is on the left side of the keyboard. That's where the A is. And this is going to be layer two. Very easy. Uh, let's just make it a, a thing like that. And then layer two, right? Uh, and I'm holding Control. Anything I do that to on this layer using the Control, it's not going to affect layer one. I mean, why would it? It's a different layer. And if just if you imagine like pieces of paper on top of each other, that's essentially what it is. Now, if something's on a separate layer, I can move it around. I could hit Control T to free transform it and hold Shift to, to uh, constrain the proportions, make it bigger. I could hold Shift and rotate it, and it'll snap to different degrees. I can let go of Shift and rotate it, and it won't snap. Um, but it's all on a separate layer, so that's why it works like that. Now let's say I'm happy with uh, these two layers as is, and I want to merge them down. You can go and press this and hit Merge Down or Control E. Now they're both on the same layer, right? That's, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, once you know that, you can pretty much do anything, right? So if you have like a, a drawing, right? You, uh, make the drawing on a separate layer because if you draw in the background you can't really move it around or manipulate it just like that so make a new layer uh, we'll get a good old uh, smiley face and let's say you did some nice line art and you want to paint it um, there's a couple ways to do it you can uh, make another layer that's that's horrible um, <laughs> underneath it right so you just click on the background layer and do that now whatever I paint on layer the second layer that I made it's actually still under the first layer. And you can move them around by clicking and dragging and making them above and below. But let's just make this smiley face smile. Anything I paint under it is going to show up uh, underneath. And of course, I can move it around. And I could even use Control U, which brings up hue and saturation, and move this around and change the color of that thing. Uh, and again, I could hit Control T, rotate it if I want. Uh, let's say I want to rotate both of them without merging them. I hold shift and pull and select both of these layers Control T move it around no big deal uh, Another way you can do that in terms of coloring. Let's say we, we make a new layer and we we paint on top of it Oh, no, our line work is disappearing. Wow. What are we gonna do about this now? You could either bring it below or you set that layer blending mode over here where it says normal set that to multiply right now what that does is it makes things that are below it darker. And if I duplicate that layer, right, so uh, what Multiply does is uh, if you have a layer, I just made it blue so it's easier to see, uh, and you have a, like if I'm painting red on a new layer up here set to Multiply, uh, it, on white it just shows up as regular red, but as it goes over this, it multiplies and makes it darker. That's kind of like, um, like a highlighter or a marker situation. So. Yeah, that's um, and you can merge those down by selecting all three of them like this, and then hitting Control E. Oh, so I just hit Control R by accident. What that does is it brings up the ruler on top, and you could set that to uh, inches, percent, uh, and all these other ones. I like percent because that lets me know exactly where the halfway mark is. If I click here and drag, I can put a guideline on the 50% mark so I know exactly where halfway is on the X and the Y axis. Yeah, so um, I mean that that's kind of really all you need to know. Uh, I guess that could couple, cover a couple more things. Uh, so the marquee tool, um, you can select any given selection, uh, make a new layer, 
Uh, you could fill it with the paint bucket tool. I actually never use the paint bucket tool. I just use the gradient tool. And you might say, well, paint bucket tool is easier because you could fill the whole thing up. Um, and with the gradient tool, it does that, right? It makes a gradient. But what I like to do is just um, click over here and drag this way, and all of that gets filled in. That way I don't have to change the tool, and if I want to use a gradient, I can do that. And then rotate it, control I to invert it if I want. Um, and then the uh, if you click and hold here, you can change that to a, an elliptical marquee tool. Make a new layer, fill that in again with, I don't know, this, this color, move it around, rotate it, doesn't matter. Set it to multiply, see what that does. Uh, multiplies over. Also, you can set it to other things like uh, overlay, uh, and and like you could just set it to normal, and then press the. If you're on a PC, you can press down, and it will cycle through each of the blending modes so you can see what the different options are. All right, so that's that. Um, the polygonal lasso tool. So what this does is you can select very specific points, and that will make a selection. Uh, I could either make a new layer, or just fill something in like that. I could paint within that, right? Um, let's make a new layer, right? Uh, now the other lasso tool is just the regular, so you can kind of just make selections like this. Fill that in if you want. Let's just go ahead and delete all three of these. Um, I'm going to hit Control H to hide these guidelines, and then make a new layer. And um, Let's see, if I'm doing a lasso selection using the regular lasso tool, but I want a straight line, if I hold Alt and I let go uh, with my Wacom pen, it will turn into the, the polygonal lasso tool. And if I press down and drag around, it'll go back to the polygonal. And I think it works inversely if you're using the, um, the polygonal lasso tool, etc. Uh, wand tool, you can pretty much click anywhere and it will select this, the similar colors. You can change the tolerance if it's, the higher the tolerance, the, the, the more it's gonna select colors that are like near it. So you could experiment with that. Uh, so how do I select colors if I ha already have something on the page? So, you know, there's a couple colors here. And what I can do is if I have the brush selected, but I want to quickly select this yellow instead of going here and then going all the way back down and trying to find the exact thing. I can just hold Alt, and the eyedropper will come up, and I could tap that once, and there you go. I could do that with the red, with the black, with any color really. And if I just click and drag it around it, you can see this thing pop up and it shows you what color it's going to select. Uh, eraser tool. So if I hit E, the eraser tool will be selected, and you, I have it set to the airbrush right now. And it's all on that layer, so yeah. Another th cool thing you can do is if you have a, a layer and you, let's say, make a new layer above it and you want to kind of constrain whatever is on here only into the layer beneath it. Now, what we're going to do is call the clipping mask. I hold Alt and in between two, these two layers, I, this thing will pop up when I hold Alt and it will lock into only those pixels, right? And that's useful for when you're doing like um, when you're painting within a silhouette or a uh, or a selection or something like that. Stamp tool, I do not use that. I'm not very familiar with it. Um, mixer brush, I already have a video on how to use the mixer brush. I need my settings up here at the top for that. Um, definitely look at my how to blend video. Smudge tool, I do not use that. Dodge and burn tool, do not use that. Pen tool, uh, so that's this right here. You can uh, make, you could click a dot here, dot there, and you'll get like really sharp perfect lines, but if I click here, and I click and hold and drag, you can get a nice curve, and you can get really fancy with learning how to use these um, little handles and stuff, and then let's actually get rid of that, make a new layer. And if we go back to paths over here, where we mentioned earlier, uh, that's our selection, and if you notice in that tiny little thumbnail, it has those the same shapes we made. If we add a couple more shapes, it'll pop up here too, right? Uh, now let's say I wanna fill that in. I could select the color and press this button, and it fills that in. I'm going to hit Control Z. Uh, if I want a stroke outline, again, press that button. And it's going to do the stroke of whatever brush you have selected. So um, if I want a stroke that does something like that, I'll hit this button and it'll use that brush. Uh, one last thing, if I want to make that into a selection, I'll hit this button, button, and that becomes a selection. I'm going to click here, so actually I don't need to. And now that becomes just a regular lasso selection, right? And I can fill that in 
to my leisure. Type tool, yada, yada, yada. Um, you could transform that, make it bigger, rotate it. Uh, you mess with all the stuff over here, change the direction of it. And the shape tool, this is uh, pretty cool, I guess. I mean, you can make shapes like that. You could hold shift to constrain the size of it. Um, oh, and then the, I press uh, Z for the zoom tool. So uh, if I want to get really close and work on details, I'll press, like if I'm already on the brushes, or the brush tool, I could press Z, zoom tool comes up, and I can zoom in and out. And I have scrubby zoom selected, which means it's got this, uh, I could scrub, essentially, and then it will uh, zoom in. If I de deselect that, it'll have this thing. And that's kind of the default if your video card is not good enough to um, support the uh, scrubby zoom. So go back to scrubby zoom. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep hitting F and go back to that. And um, hmm, that's pretty much the basics. And I think if you just learn all these things and you, you try to revisit your, your paintings and your kind of uh, line work and painting under it using multiply or whatever tools and layers um, you know maybe that that's helpful so uh, hopefully that helped this is kind of like a, a very basic I'll try to get into more advanced stuff later on uh, you know how to you know how to use filters and um, you know shifting the channels and you know getting effects and stuff so and also things like quick masks and, and mask selections mask layer masks and all that stuff uh, so yeah I hope that helped and um, by the way someone mentioned uh, you know, hey man, I know you you want to do all these new videos and whatever, but you know don't burn out. I, uh, don't worry about me. I think I'm just doing this for fun. I'm, you know, the joke is I'm trying to get more subs, but no, I, I think I'm just having a good time getting back into it. Um, and especially because I'm about to go on vacation, uh, so I won't have access to a computer anyway. So giving you some stuff to to enjoy while I'm gone. All right, hope that helped, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more.